Hello everyone, my name is Ipua and welcome. Today I am doing a speed art video. So in all of my drawings the first stage is always just a really simple basic sketch. Uh, I don't worry too much about the proportions here, this is just to like give me some layout. And then I start lining the piece, so I use a really really sharp brush so that it's great for coloring later to actually make all my line art and I determine which lines would actually be kind of uh, shading lines so this is what I do in the, we could say, second phase. Next step is applying the base colors. Uh, this process can sometimes take a bit longer because magic wand is not always super precise. But in this process I just simply apply the really base base colors without any shades or anything. This is just like laying out the foundations. In general, if I have to apply multiple colors on the same layer, I usually use alpha look because that allows me to only color on the already existing colored areas. So that is really really helpful when it comes to blending and when, and when it comes to coloring in the small areas without actually worrying about getting color on the area that's not supposed to be colored, so on the background for example. The next step is the shading. The shading is probably the longest actual stage of drawing. I always use a multiply settings layer for shading and I use this watercolor brush that came with sketchbook which is in my opinion really really great for shading and blending the shadows. Recently I have discovered this method where I actually used shadows for displaying volume so I don't actually make an extra layer with base colors that creates like these lines. I just manipulate shadows and play with brush uh, opacity and flow to actually make some darker lines or lighter lines. For example, the mouth of the dragon, I drew that simply on the shading layer by just using uh, a brush with more flow and opacity so the line is prominent. And just the general shadows, I just simply use a lower flow brush so that the shadows are actually easier. And the lines that I did on the line art layer are actually my guidelines for the shadows so that I can actually make uh, and see which shadows should be darker, which should be lighter. And it really really helps me uh, set the volume of the actual object that I'm shading and make sure that the, the object isn't flat because if it's flat then the shadows aren't doing their job. The point of my shadows is to create volume, so it's really really important to me that the shadows are nice and visible and strong enough to be seen, but also not too strong so that they make the piece look bad. And at the same time as shading I also start adding highlights, because highlights are just as important as shadows. You want to have your darks and you want to have your lights. And for highlights I also use the watercolor brush uh, on an overlay layer because I find that overlay a great setting for lighting. And I usually use really really light colors, especially if the main color that I'm shading and lighting is a bit darker. So then the light colors are really really important here. As you know, my profile picture is this edit of a toothless, basically, with blue eyes and blue ear flaps, little ones. Um, and I decided that it was actually time to draw this character that has been representing me on YouTube and on the internet in general for the past five years, almost. I must say, it was really therapeutic to draw this really 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 relaxing and exactly something that I actually needed in this time period. The drawing itself, I might even make it my profile picture, 
I'm not sure entirely about that. It is currently my new YouTube banner, although because of the actual um, size and scale of the drawing, only part of it is visible. But yeah, I made it a new YouTube banner, and I might uh, make a full body drawing of this uh, my this dragon as that I'll actually fit to make it a YouTube banner. Um, this dragon is actually Apoa. This is who Apoa is and who I am. So, yeah, I think I might actually make my banner a bit more artistic to more represent me. This part where I was drawing and shading wings was very experimental to me, as wings are still something that I kinda struggle with, but it was still pretty fun to actually make because you could see how different shadows actually made the wing look and drawing these like highlights on the wings like the wings have the bones where the leather kind of folds and then there's this part where it's exposed to light that was actually really really fun to make and so was on the other wing where I actually drew the inside of the wing because you're looking at this one from like the, the from the bottom or from the below so it was kind of different but it was still it was a great experience and a great learning experience i might say Next come the eyes. I always do eyes on special layers. They have their own special uh, coloring layer and pupil layer and shading and highlights layer so that they don't uh, mess with the actual body base colors. And I usually do leave eyes for like toward the end of the drawing because it is at least to me really really satisfying to see how the drawing comes to life basically when you add eyes. I also use the same actual method for making eyes. First I apply the base colors, then I add the shadows and the highlights. Horror eyes need more detail than just uh, adding volume to them. So I, at this point I basically just experiment and kind of play with layer effects and brushes and how I like the details to look. It's not always easy since I'm using a mouse, so it can be kind of tricky to follow the right opacity and size and uh, the right like actual movements of the details. But once I like something, I stick to that method, and I'm actually really really happy how the details turned out in these eyes. Also, if there's some extra details on the skin itself around the eyes that I need to fix, I always do that. Now comes the texturing. Now, as for texturing, I'm not particularly good at it, so I kind of just experiment. But the method that I found that kind of works for me is that I make a layer that is above the base colors, but it's under the shading and highlights, because that way the base colors remain intact, but still all of my textures receive the same shadow that they that the same base colors would actually receive, so that the shading and highlights still uh, affect the whole piece and that I don't have to spend extra extra time shading each and every texture. 
Now I just mostly experiment with layer settings and brushes for different textures. For example, for scales I used a hard light layer, I believe, and kind of just played with that. Uh, and the fact that I still had my preserved uh, shading and highlights, it really really helped because then they still remained shaded. And last comes the background. I'm not also really good at backgrounds, mostly because I don't like doing them. For this background I just simply made a simple night sky and I added some stars. I always do backgrounds on their own separate layers with their own uh, some shading and highlights. And these stars were something I actually really really liked. It was really fun playing around with them. And I added some cloud and mist with some uh, low opacity brushes and it was actually a really simple background that I did like. Then I did some quick lighting and uh, shading effects and that was the drawing itself. And that was it. So this is my first time doing a voiceover or speed art basically so i really hope you enjoyed this if you have any art tips for me feel free to leave them in the comments i love to learn about art i always, I always want to improve if you want you can check this piece on my deviant art it is linked uh, when you click on my channel there's a link to my deviant art if you leave a comment i'd love to read it so thank you so so much for watching and for listening until next time so long.